Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in, your, in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the God, of the Lord, shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of, the God, word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arms rules for him. His reward is with him, and his re recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs of, on his arms, and carry them in his bo bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Let us pray the appointed psalm. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from Peter's second letter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. The day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hasten, hastening the coming of the day of God? Because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. 
Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him and at peace without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey he proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Repent! In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just before I began second grade, my family moved to Simsbury, Connecticut, a suburb of Hartford where my dad was transferred. My dad was in a particularly venturous mood at that stage in his life, and he decided to step out of his conventional center hall colonial cul-de-sac kind of taste in houses and he took a walk on the wild side. We were under contract on an old orchard with a rambling farmhouse. Back then 
people wanted walk-in closets. We would have a walk-in fireplace in the kitchen with pot hooks on the side of the walls of it. The possibilities for a second grader for hide and go seek and forts and enjoying barns seem endless. I couldn't wait. But like most promises of paradise dangled before you, this cloud came with a horse manure lining. The second grade teacher of the school from that town was a monster. She screamed and she scolded. She screeched and shouted if you didn't know the answer. On my very first day of school, three girls ran out of the classroom in tears. I was horrified. We had moved from Charlotte, North Carolina. I missed the soft, the soft dulcet tones of my Tar Hill teachers who thought it not ladylike to raise your voice. And I thought to myself, y'all talk harsh up here. In the motel where we were living, my mom made oatmeal with real maple syrup made from the sap of local trees with buckets hanging from them. I had never tasted anything like it before. My mom would carefully pour it on, explaining where it came from. But I was so scared to go to school, I couldn't eat it. To this day, real maple syrup tastes to me like that teacher. Fortunately, my dad got cold feet about the orchard and backed out of the contract and we moved into a center hall colonial in a neighborhood that sent kids to a different school. And I landed at Tooten Hill School. It still exists today. Where kids were fun, the teachers were sweet, and I was popular even despite my accent. I was left with that feeling that Jesus had gotten me out of a real jam that I had dodged the bullet, that grace had found a way. It's been about the only consistent, consistent, reliable element of my life. No matter how bad it gets, help is on the way. Love will find a way. Hold on, wait, watch, Advent. God's not done. John the Baptist begins our journey here yelling at us for not knowing the answer. He condemns us for being slackers and shirkers. He says to us today that your faith is flimsy, your commitment to God is tissue thin, and you treat each other horribly. The sad part about John's proclamation that it's true. His solution? Repent. Get it together, you big loser. It's time you buckle down, missy, and knock off all the tomfoolery. It's time to clean up your act. Reform yourself or die. We know what's wrong with us. We know what needs changing about us. We don't really need John to tell us. I don't know about you, but I've got my own version of John the Baptist that lives inside my head, yelling, telling me what I did wrong all the time. It says things to me like, oh, Robert, you're so stupid, or selfish, or smug, or impatient, or judgmental. Or, Robert, you're such a phony. I got John the Baptist screaming his fool head off at me all day long. 
I don't need to come to church to hear that. It's free in my head about what a screw-up that I am. John says, repent. You need to change. We know that. Knowing what's wrong doesn't really change it. John seems to know that his moral reform movement is doomed to fail. He says there's one coming that's more powerful than him. Power, he says, is coming. That's what we need, power. The Holy Spirit to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. John says to us, your life is a mess. Clean it up. Jesus' proclamation is rather different. He says, you know, you don't have to live that way. I want better for you. Let me help you. I will give you the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit power to transform you on the inside. Your life is not working. I will give you a new life. My life lived in you in a new year, this Advent. So when John starts screaming at me, when the voice of my own inadequacies start blaring, when every flaw is obvious and every sin conspicuous, and it all seems insurmountable, I say to John the Baptist, shut up. You are not worthy to untie Jesus' sandal. Being baptized by the Holy Spirit means coming to the end of your own strength and finding Jesus' strength instead. It turns out that you actually can learn a whole lot of math without being yelled at. And so I've made myself some oatmeal here. And instead of the scary, real maple syrup from Connecticut, I've got pure, raw honey from Jersey. <laughs> this is Jersey made Bee Flower and Sun Honey Company Clover Blossom Honey. And I'm going to pour it on my oatmeal today and stir it and taste the Jesus honey of Jersey. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. So sweet, like grace. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Carly, our bishop, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for our troubled nation, for all who suffer from pandemic worry and illness, and for those who are running out of resources.
Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Good morning, and welcome to Advent 2 here at Christ Church. It's a pleasure to have you here. I hope you've enjoyed uh, already the uh, first installment of Confessions to the Canon. We've got a doozy, I mean an absolute blockbuster for Wednesday. So I encourage you to tune in uh, and, um, and see what kind of dirt that I can dig on Wednesday. All right, that's announcements. This is like real, real announcements where I get lost. We go into the blessing now. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.